Number 58. The awe-inspiring Great Pyramid of Cheops was built more than 4,500 years ago. Its square base, originally 230 meters on a side, covered 13.1 acres, and it was 146 meters high, with a mass of about 7 times 10 to the 9 kilograms. The pyramid's dimensions are slightly different today due to quarrying and some sagging. Historians estimate that 20,000 workers spent 20 years to construct it, while working 12-hour days, 330 days per year. Letter A. Calculate the gravitational potential energy stored in the pyramid given its center of mass is at one-fourth its height. All right. So here is, look at that great pyramid right there, ladies and gentlemen. Now that is a great pyramid. So here's the mass, right? It's 7 times 10 to the 9 kilograms, and they told us that it was 146 meters high. It says now that the center of mass is one-fourth of its height. So that's going to be important in terms of calculating the gravitational potential energy, okay? Because we have to calculate the height relative to the center of mass of this pyramid, okay? So it says that it's about one-fourth of the height, right? So in terms of my picture here, maybe one-fourth the height might be around that point. And basically, I would just take the height and divide it by four, right? To find then the height from the center of mass all the way down to the bottom of the pyramid. Okay. So now um, we're looking to calculate its gravitational potential energy. So let me plug letter A over here. Gravitational potential energy has a formula over here on the right-hand side, guys. Um, I highlighted it. Let's write it over here. The potential energy is equal to the mass times gravity times the height, right, to which the mass was raised. So here, the potential energy that's stored in this pyramid is going to be the mass of the entire pyramid, so 7 times 10 to the 9, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, 9.80, multiplied by the height um, from basically the, the initial, the, excuse me, the final height minus the initial height, all right, and the initial height we assume to be a value of zero here, and then the final height was a value taking it from the center of mass, 146 over 4, right? So this is simply 146 over 4. And therefore the potential energy stored in this great pyramid is going to simply be 7 times 10 to the 9 times 9.8 times 146 over 4. So we get about 2.5, so we got 2. Point, how many sig figs? Well, I mean they gave me the mass with one sig fig, so I guess I should have really one, but uh, it would be three, but I, I kind of want to it's going to round it a little too much, possibly for later answers. So I'm just going to leave it in this form times 10 to the 12th. And uh, right. Yeah, that's going to be in joules. So that's the potential energy that's stored in the pyramid. All right, let's take a look at letter B. Only a fraction of the workers lifted blocks. Most were involved in support services such as building ramps, bringing food and water and hauling blocks to the site. Calculate the efficiency of the workers uh, who did the lifting, assuming there were 1,000 of them and they consumed food energy at the rate of 300 kilocalories per hour. Okay, and then it says, what does your answer imply about how much of their work went into block lifting versus how much of the work went into friction lifting and lowering the bodies? Okay, so let's write down letter B up here. We'll do it at the top. All right, so basically... Right, we need to calculate the efficiency of the workers. Okay, so let's first start with the efficiency formula over here on the bottom right, where it says that the efficiency is equal to the work put out or the useful output of work divided by the energy put in to perform that useful out work, uh, perform that useful output of work. So in this problem, as we've seen in problems before, the energy in is generally the total energy metabolized um, by the person. And then their useful output, right, in terms of work, is definitely less than the amount that they're actually metabolizing inside of their body. All right? And that's the whole point. I mean, this fraction cannot be greater than one. If it is, something's wrong. So that being the case... Let's see. It says calculate the efficiency of the workers who did lifting, assuming there were 1,000 of them, and they consumed food energy at the rate of 300 kilocalories per hour. So they gave us the energy put in. Okay, that's going to be the energy that the uh, they were metabolizing. And now think about well, what would have been their energy output? Well, guess what the point of part A was. 
The point of part A was to actually calculate that, right? The potential energy that's stored, the gravitational potential energy that's stored inside the pyramid, this energy had to come from somewhere, right? It came from the work output of those laborers, okay? So that being the case, I actually do know the numerator already. That's going to be 2.5 times 10 to the 12. And what I need to do now is find the denominator. Now, just keep in mind, though, right, I have joules here, okay? So meaning the work on the top is in joules. I have to find joules then for the bottom, okay? So that's my goal here. So how do I do that? Well, what do they tell me? First, they told me that um, we're starting at a rate of 300 kilocalories per hour, okay? That's what they were uh, consuming, food energy, right, at that particular rate. Okay, so let's start with that number. So they were consuming food energy at, oops, at 300 uh, kilocalories per hour, okay? And what I need to do is I need to somehow convert this thing down to joules. So I already noticed first I got kilocalories in the numerator. So I want to get rid of kilocalories. And let me just go right to joules, okay? So we know that there is 4,184 joules in one kilocalorie. So right now I got the joules per hour, right, of food um, consumed, right? Okay. So now from here, now here's the thing. They told us the the rate at which they were consuming food energy. Um, but I guess, you know, is this per every hour, per 24 hours, right? Or is this uh, per, you know, the hours, the 12 hours that they were working, all right? So I think it's going to be, I think, let's see, it doesn't consume food energy. So I'm going to assume that consume food energy, it's talking about their metabolism, and that metabolism is running at 300 kilocalories per hour for the amount of hours that they are working, okay? So let's just calculate the joules for one person, okay, over this whole span of, you know, 20 years, right? We got to calculate how many hours they were working over 20 years. And then at the end, we'll multiply it by 1,000 because there were 1,000 of them. So first things first, let's now multiply. We have to get rid of hours, right? So they were working, as they told us, 12 hours a day, right? So their work day was 12 hours, and that consu that took them one day to work those 12 hours. So the hours are gone. Okay, now I got to get rid of days. And they worked 330, uh, excuse me, 330 days per year, right? So now I can use that conversion here, 330 days per one year, okay? And then... They did it for 20 years, okay? So this one particular individual, all right, would have consumed, and this would be 20 years on the top, right? And notice the years cancel, and guess what units left here? Just the jewel, and that's what we wanted, right? That's what we were looking for, okay? But the only difference, remember, I'll just put this over one over here, all right? I'll put this over one. Now remember, though, this would just be for one person over those 20 years, all right, but remember, there's a thousand of them, so I just got to multiply my answer by one thousand at the end. Okay. Once I do this conversion, now I'll have my value. So let's take three uh, three hundred times four thousand one hundred eighty-four times twelve times three hundred and thirty times twenty times one thousand, and we get a value of about nine point one second. So we get nine point nine four times 10 to the 13, times 10 to the 13, and that's in terms of joules, okay? So this is the energy that was put in, meaning the rate that they were, not the rate, this is the energy that they metabolized over that period of time, right? So now uh, what we're gonna look to do is we are going to look to now plug this into our uh, formula and solve, all right? So let's see. So now we got the work uh, in, was 9.9, .9, sorry, 9 point, whoops, now we're getting crazy, 9.94 .9 times 10 to the 13 divided by uh, 2.5 times 10 to the 12, okay? And now we can calculate our value. So this is 2.5 times 10 to the 12 divided by that answer. Okay, great. And we get an efficiency here of about 
zero point zero two five one, right? Or about two point five one percent. Okay, so that was their efficiency. Okay, so now let's look at letter C. So it says calculate the mass of food that had to be supplied each day. Okay, assuming that the average worker required 3,600 kilocalories per day and that their diet was 5% protein, 60% carbohydrate, and 35% uh, fat. Okay, so now for letter C. So first things first. Um, we need to know uh, what protein, carbohydrate, and fat are in terms of their energy output per gram. Okay, so these are, these are very common values. So for protein, there's about uh, 4 kilocalories per gram. Okay, for carbs, carbohydrates, it's about the same. So about 4 kilocalories per gram. And then for fats... It's about nine, okay, kilocalories per gram. All right, so now um, they give us now percentages, right? They say that 5% of the diet was protein. So let me write a little 5% here. Or actually, let me write it in terms of its decimal, right? Because I'm going to be doing a multiplication. 60% uh, was carbohydrate. So that's a 0 0.60. And then 35% was fat. So now what we can do is we can do essentially what this is called. This is called a weighted average, right? Where what you do is you take the percents, okay? You multiply it by their values, their respective values, and then you add then the results together, okay? So for example, let's calculate these values, right? So we got 4 kilocalories times 0.05. That's going to be 0.2, right? Right? Uh, this value right here should be 2.4. And then, and by the way, these the units here are all in kilocalories per gram. And then we got 9 times 0.35. So this is 3.15. Now what we do is we add these three values together. Okay. And when we do that, after we add them together, we get the average value. So this is the average value here is going to be 5.75. So 5.75 kilocalories per gram. This is now the average um, energy, right, per gram of the food that they ate. Okay. So now what we can do. Okay. So now since we know that, remember they now consumed 3,600 kilocalories per day. Okay. So what I can now do is I can remember I want to again they're t saying calculate the mass of food that they had to that had to be supplied each day, all right. So first, let me realize that I if I want to find grams and I realize grams are here in the denominator, I have to essentially flip this fraction, okay, so that I get grams in the numerator. So when I do my dimensional analysis like I did up here, I get the grams in the numerator, and that's how I want my answer. And then I got to figure out how to cancel the kilocalories, right? So let's do the math right here. So this is going to be 5.75. Excuse me. I got to flip it, right? I just said it, but I didn't do it. One gram divided by 5.75 kilocalories. Okay. Take that now value and multiply it then by the total kilocalories per day. So they said about 3,600. Okay. Now kilocalories would cancel and this would tell us how many grams, right? But remember, this value really is... 3,600 kilocalories per person because it says that the average worker required, right? So really I could put down here per one person, okay? But how many persons are there? There, I mean, there's 20,000 of them, but they're specifically talking about, I believe, the 1,000, um, assuming the average, yeah. I think actually doesn't really, does it say specifically? Hmm. You know what? So this part is actually a little ambiguous because it's a calculate the mass of food that had to be supplied each day. Now, I don't know if there's still, you know, letter C is leading on to, you know, calculate the mass just for the thousand of these people, right, uh, that had to lift the blocks. Um, but 
uh, they might be referring to the total workers, right, as well. I'm not sure, but regardless of whichever one they're specifically talking about, that would just affect, I mean, that'll affect the final answer, obviously. But that will then determine what value I place up here. All right, so let me uh, assume that it's for the total workers, okay? So if it's for the total workers, then I would place the 20,000 workers or person on the top. And notice the persons cancel, the kilocalories will cancel, and then therefore now I'm left with gram, okay? And this would be the daily now value that they would need in terms of mass. So 3,600 times 20,000 divided by 5.75 Wowzers. So we're looking at a value of so 1.25 times 10 raised to the 3, 7. Right? That's in terms of grams. Let me just make sure I have the right decimals places. Yeah. That's times 10 to the 7 grams. So this is in terms of, you know, this is about a 12, 12 12.5 million. All right, uh, grams, that is, uh, you know, and then if you divide that by 1,000, you know, you have, you're talking about 12,000 kilograms per day of food. It's a lot of food, all right, a lot of mass. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.